Hello and welcome to this episode of All Monsters Go to Space. So a couple of weeks ago I made a video on vampire and werewolf hybrids and mythology, where I covered a type of Aswang from Filipino folklore, which was a hybrid of European vampire and werewolf mythology. Now in that video I did cover other types of Aswang briefly, but you guys loved it so much I thought I'd start a series covering other types of Aswang in more detail, starting with probably the most popular and well-known Aswang, the Mamanangao. This is a creature most commonly seen as female, which during the day is a normal woman, which at night is capable of separating its upper torso and sprouting large bat-like wings, which is commonly said to feed on the fetuses of pregnant women, but is also known to feed on the blood of young men. They feed on both with a long tongue capable of piercing the flesh. This creature is also extremely difficult to harm, and if injured will heal incredibly quickly. But having said this, the Mamanangal is not immortal, and when one of these creatures is coming to the end of its life, it is said to cough up a black chick, which will be passed on and swallowed by another, who then themselves will become a Mamanangal. However, these creatures can be kept at bay with the cross, garlic and silver, something introduced by the Spanish as well as ginger and the crack of a whip. The Mamanangal can even be killed, as at night when it separates, it leaves its lower half behind, and if you can find it and pour salt onto it, the Mamanangal will be incapable of reattaching itself, causing it to die. So this creature is truly bizarre, but despite tales of Mamanangals being passed down, many by word of mouth, we actually know a lot about how this folklore came to be. You see, the original Mamanangal was incredibly similar to what we have today, and dates back to ancient times, probably as a way of explaining miscarriages, but it was seen as either male or female, and it was only when the Spanish occupied the Philippines in the 1500s that this creature became almost exclusively female, as a lot of the Filipino healers at the time were female, who held a lot of influence over the community. So by the Spanish making the Mamanangals female, it made the Filipinos suspicious of these once trusted and respected women, reducing the risk of rebellion. The Spanish were also the ones who spread the belief that the cross would keep this creature away, in a successful effort to spread Catholicism throughout the Philippines. They as well added things like garlic and silver as a way of keeping this monster at bay, inspired by European tales of vampires. The mythology of the Mamanangal is still evolving, obviously because of the influence of American Hollywood films about vampires and werewolves and other supernatural creatures. So as you can see, the Mamanangal has been strongly influenced by the Spanish and Americans, but it seems Mamanangal may have had an influence on other cultures as well, as there is a Japanese urban legend of a woman missing her lower body that comes out at night to cut young women in half, turning them into a creature like herself. This creature is known as the Taker Taker. Due to the similarity between the two, I turned detective and discovered that this urban legend started during the end of World War II, which is incredibly interesting, as between 1942 and 1945, the Philippines was occupied by the Japanese, so it seems highly likely that the Japanese soldiers will have taken stories of the Mamnangal home and it has evolved into the Taker Taker urban legend. So I think that about does it for this video, but if you did enjoy it, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the comment section and on Twitter.